Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Now, today I'll be doing something just a bit different. So, a couple of weeks ago I got approached by a company called Vagon.io. Now, you might be wondering what Vagon.io is and why is it relevant for this channel. Vagon.io is a service that allows you to rent a supercomputer remotely that's made with creatives in mind. So, when they approached me, they told me that they are developing a service for animators and 3D designers, architects, and I was immediately interested. So in order to do it justice, I decided to make a project from scratch to finished product. So I wanted to make a looping animation and I wanted to model it. I wanted to animate it, texture it, light it, and also render it with Vagon and see how that process is. I'll be adding a screen cap video to this video and I'll be doing a voiceover to explain what's going on. I'll be explaining the process, everything. So in the end, you can decide if you want to try Vagon for yourself. In any case, let's get to the video. So setting up a Vagon account was painless. I immediately got my computer. It took a couple of minutes to set up and then I started with my blank slate. Every computer starts blank so you can install whatever program you need on that. I quickly searched for Blender and I installed it and started working on a project immediately. So I wanted to do a project from scratch and I wanted to see if I could do that working on a remote computer. And I have to say, I was really pleased with the results. There was some initial lag in the beginning at like a middle uh, stream position, but after a couple of minutes, it became negligible. Uh, at least to me personally. I just got into the flow of things and I had no issues whatsoever. You can see that I'm doing like this more intricate keyboard design and I did it just in a couple of minutes. So the streaming capabilities that Vagon offers are not an issue. I had them on low for most of my session and then I switched to high at the end to check up on renders, to check up on uh, the scene to see if there's any issues or details that I've missed, but for the most part, I was working in a middle or low streaming option. Now, when it came to the actual workflow, I was trying everything, the shortcuts, I was trying to see if there's any mishappenings or something, and I had no trouble. First time that I tried Vagon, I had some issues with the shift key because it wasn't working, the middle mouse, but they fixed all of the issues that those initial uh, releases had. So I have to say I'm really impressed with that. Uh, it's also worth noting that they are working towards making desktop apps so you can access your computer directly from your desktop. They're also working on expanding uh, the features, storage. They're working on uh, options that integrate Adobe, which is great news for also many illustrators and designers. The flow of the process was painless for me personally. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. I could just fly through a project. This project took me about an hour and a half to make uh, with figuring out everything that I needed. So I just started it from scratch and I could make everything that I would normally make for either my Instagram posts or something for my clients. So I was really happy with that. I was happy with how the project was turning out. I was happy with how it was looking. I had no issues whatsoever. I didn't have any network lag or drops because that is a usual problem with these apps, with remote access apps. I also have to say that the support team is absolutely delightful. Uh, the first time that I had trouble, they listened to everything that I had to say. They would take into account that I'm a Blender user. They would ask constantly what are some of these shortcuts, if there's anything else that I have to comment. And they took the comments to heart. So they would really go into it and try to solve the problem so everyone can actually use their service, which is a really, really, really positive thing. I saw that many people took issue with the pricing. Now the pricing is $7 per month of a flat fee and then it's about $5 per hour for their top package, which is I think 32 cores with 255 gigabytes of RAM and then 16 gigabytes of GPU. In rendering you have render farms where you can just put on your project and then render it out in a couple of hours or days. However, you don't have a remote computer. 
So you don't control a actual computer, which is for me personally, a huge thing because I've used render farms and I have to say I had really, really, really bad experiences with render farms. Uh, I used Sheepit, which was okay for a while and then they changed the system a bit. I used CoreWeave, I used RenderStreet and I always had some type of issues. In many cases, I would even render something and I would get basically nothing or some very obscure error happened and I couldn't do anything. So in this case, you start your rendering and that's it. And you can check up on your computer and see what's happening. Now, in terms of working on it daily or substituting it with your actual computer, if you really have a slow computer, I would definitely suggest that. If not, you can get the lowest option, which is about a about dollar twenty per hour. Uh, in my case, I do have a, I would say, a solid rig, but I would definitely use Vagon.io for rendering because it would help me out greatly. I could set up an internal farm with my computer and Vagon, and I could basically have my own very little farm that I could use for rendering. And since we're on rendering, right now I'm just checking what's happening. I'm checking in high definition, that's why you see a couple of artifacts, which again, they disappear in a second because the system updates really quickly. I'm just checking what's happening. I'm just checking how my view is looking. Uh, again, painless process because it was just a couple of seconds and everything updates really quickly. Also, thanks to the Tesla cards that are inside of these computers. One thing that's missing is the optics stuff from Nvidia. So I would strongly suggest to the team that they add that option because the render times can be cut significantly with that. But again, I think it was like 30 seconds for a 200 or 250 sample 180 by 180 animation, which would take about an hour or so, which is not bad for a really short um, Instagram animation. Again, the whole experience was painless. I really enjoyed it. I encountered almost no issues with the program. Uh, everything was seamless for me, and I have to say I'm really pleased with the result. So I put Vagon through my test, if I could use it for client work, if I could use it for my work, and I could definitely use this for that. I will definitely be getting Vagon for rendering first, and if I'm ever in a situation where I can't just whip out my computer or I have to work on someone else's computer, I can actually access it, I can work on a project real quick or make corrections on a project, and that's it. So yeah, basically that's it. That was my experience using Vagon. Uh, hopefully you guys will give it a try. You'll try it out. They have some free options that you can try out. So if you have a slower machine, I would definitely suggest you try Vagon, at least your free option, so you can see what it's like to test it out, what it's like to have this sort of computational power at your disposal. So yeah, basically this is it. This was my experience with Vagon. I have to say, me personally, I was impressed because I used to use uh, TeamViewer for accessing my computers remotely and doing some stuff and it was a nightmare. Uh, I could actually make a decent animation. I could make a decent loop. I was happy at how it turned out. The process was painless. So personally, I think I'll be using Vagon a lot more so hopefully you learned something useful from this video, hopefully you'll give it a try and see for yourself. Uh, there will be more tutorials coming soon, so stay tuned for that. In any case, see you later.